I guess what we can learn about aggravation is that it's not going to go away. Mm. Is that your position in or out of the kingdom of God, aggravation is not going to just go away, but it can become a tool. It what do you become, mean a tool? It become a tool for your growth. It become a tool to make you stronger instead of weaker. It can actually become the thing that pushes you toward God instead of away from God, where you trust him in places that you can't fix. Most of the time, aggravation comes in situations that we can't fix. And so we get aggravated because we can't fix it. Now, and that's another whole, that's another whole talk as well, because at a certain level of life, maybe I could have fixed something. You follow what I'm saying? Absolutely. So if I, you know, me being kind of a hand at mechanics and stuff over the years, you know, I've always kind of fixed my cars and worked on my cars. But after I get at a certain age, I get aggravated at the place where I can't fix it. Mm. And so God, then I have to, I have to trust God in that place. So what God helps me with then is he helps me with either the finances to pay somebody to fix it. So there's, pl there's places in your world that... God wants to, he wants to get involved in those places that will help you become a stronger person. I mean, it's like, um, you know, after a while they, they, they made this, um, they made this bug repellent, right? And they started spraying it and the bugs after a while got, they got immune to it. Mm. And actually they started, they, the they rats started it. eating the poison. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so at a certain level, you know, so when, 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 when aggravations come, when things that, that you cannot put your hand on, you can't fix, it, it's just another opportunity, I guess, Demetrius, for us to, for us to trust God through it. Mm. Because some things you just got to walk through, right? The Bible says the, the children of Israel walked through, the, they walked through a fire. They didn't just go to something, they walked through it. So, so maybe aggravation, oh, is it an okay emotion? Because some people, they'll be like, oh, well, I'm aggravated, I, I shouldn't feel that way. Or you look down on people when they're getting aggravated. To yeah. what extent should we... And you shouldn't should we... do that because, because the Bible says, judge not lest you be judged. And, and what happens is, is when you come to that place of aggravation, you forget... Or, or you see somebody come to that place, you forget that you live in the same world as they do. Mm. And just at another, at another place in time, that's you. So I think, I think God gives us grace. Let's say you get aggravated, and I know that you're aggravated, and I see it. Instead of me coming down on you, I got grace for you. And I come and say, hey, bro, man, I'm praying for you because I know what you're going through. Mm. I need a friend when I'm aggravated, not somebody that would... You know, and try to fix me. Mm. Sometimes we try to fix emotional responses and stimuli and all of those things. And we're not called to fix that. That's the thing. You know, and you look at them and say, hey, listen, God's doing something right now. See, if you know that going in, then you, the aggravation doesn't, it's like the, like I told you, it's like the, it's, it's like the bug. All of a sudden, it starts feeding. Right. It's, you become immune to the, because aggravation creates response mm -hmm. if you let it see our whole a half of our nation is aggravated right right now uh -huh. and you're seeing response to the stimuli and so people are responding and a lot of people are responding based on the aggravation of a lot of times aggravation is the unknown you really don't know so a trust level a trust level in god is very it's 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 absolutely uh, uh, necessary if you don't, if you're going to let these things, if you're not going to let these things change your focus. All right. So you just said the F word, mm -hmm. and you said fix everything, mm -hmm. and you said it during the message as well, and you said we can't fix everything. Right. There's people this week. They already have things that they're trying to do to start fixing things that they have no business trying to fix, they can't fix, right. and they're only going to get aggravated when they find out they can't fix it right. and only he right. can fix right. it. What would you, uh, what can we sh uh, share with that person that is that person that's trying to fix everything and they're not giving God an opportunity to do what he's supposed to do? Well, you pretty much said it. That's the key is how do I get... How do I get, I guess, how do I get beyond reactive and become responsive? In other words, because reactions are, 
are right on the edge of the stimuli, right? So that stimuli produces. Um, Victor Frankl, yeah. um, who you know was a tremendous, has tremendous uh, truth in the fact that he survived Auschwitz, and he survived Auschwitz in incremental moments because they used him as a, they used him, it was terrible what they did to him, but he found out that if he could reduce his moments of, of because the stimuli would produce something, it produces a reaction. So he would say, I'm going to make a choice from the stimuli to my response, I'm gonna make a choice to exercise my freedom to not let it make something of me that I don't, I don't wanna be. So he began to be free in incremental moments. And he found himself in those incremental moments, he went somewhere else. In his mind, he went somewhere else. He saw himself after, he saw himself being delivered from Auschwitz and back in Austria teaching his students how he made it through. And the exact thing happened to him. He ended up being, being delivered and he taught his students how to get through incremental pain and things that happened. So for me, I, I see that as, a, as an answer, is that how I take that, how I receive that, that stimuli. So when you receive a stimuli, immediately you have a choice. Do I respond and how do I respond? And take that moment where the stimuli doesn't own you and your actions don't own you. In a moment, you're free. Just in that second, before you respond, I'm free. And I would say, what do I do in that second? What do I do in that moment? And that's where you ask Father. You ask Papa God. You ask who God is to you. You ask him, Father, help me with this right here. Let me not, let me not respond and cause more damage. Because most of the time our response ends up creating another response. And then we have to... And, by the time it escal escalates, and you know, mm -hmm. by the time it escalates, you've got a ride on your hands. So that's what an incremo <laughs> incremental moment is? Yeah. Is that difference between it's, when you have to be still? It's that moment between the stimuli mm. and your response. Mm. That freedom space right there. I can just, I own that. Nobody owns that but me. Mm. And what can I do in that moment will set me free in my future. And that's an incremental moment. Yeah. We wasn't supposed to go. I, I, I know, didn't want to go. Know, that I, was really, that's where, really that's good. Where I wanted to go. um, all right, last thing. I wanted to ask you about this fire and gold that you was talking about. You was talking about you got to uh, go through the fire. Yeah, you. you yeah, you're talking about how you got to go through the fire um, to know if you're an authentic gold right, or a right, genuine gold. Right. Could you explain that just... Well, yeah, and Old Testament, Old Testament, I was bringing in Old Testament truth all the way to New Testament, and that's what Peter does mm. in the scripture. He talks about... And that's the book of First, uh, First Peter. First Peter okay. talks about some Old Testament principles of gold tried in the fire. And when God, one of the things that God said right as he closed the old book, in the book of Malachi, he says, he says there comes, there's coming a day when I will purge the sons of Levi. And that's basically the priests, okay? The priests, Levi was, was uh, you know, you had a priesthood all the way from Aaron on down. And the priests would be purged. He said, I'm going to purify and purge them. And now the New Testament says, and Peter says the same thing. You can read it there. He says, now we are a kingdom of priests. We are a holy nation, a royal priesthood. So he calls the body of Christ this new priesthood. And so when he talks about getting gold tried in the fire, the Old Testament, God said, I'm going to purify the sons of Levi like, like gold and silver is purified. And if you study gold, if you study purification of metals, they have to heat them up to a certain temperature. When they heat them up to a certain temperature, there's, a, there, the, the, there's an impurity. If there's any impurities, it, they, they come to the surface. It, surface. It's called slag. And, and they, will, they take a little ladle and they just, it comes to the surface. Every time, whenever fire, and sometimes aggravation is a fire. You see where I'm going? Yeah, with this? absolutely. So the aggravation becomes, becomes the purification factor to you who's gold and God heats it up and if there's anything impure in you it comes to the surface and when it comes to the surface and you know that and that's why we don't judge one another so harshly if we know this truth because I can say hey man he's going through the fire and I can see and, and and the impurity comes to the surface and when the impurity comes to the surface the impurity usually is anger whatever 
not, not, you might you might cuss somebody out. You go, oh, I'm, I'm saying, but God said, I got to get that out of you. So he lets you go through the fire so the impurities can come out and you'll be gold tried in the fire, pure, pure gold. Because you, you were talking and so about, the, and so God says, there's a difference between gold and proven gold, proven gold. Right. Okay. And he says, I'm going to let the gold go through the fire. And he even said, even though, even though you're already proven. He, you still go through. You still go through the fire because he says, "I'm going to let the world see that you passed the test. You didn't. You didn't run. You didn't bolt when the fire came." Yeah, that yeah, that's really good. I, we usually only hear it about diamonds, right? Like, right. Pre, uh, press diamonds, yeah. but that was yeah. good. Fire and uh, fire and gold. Mm -hmm. And did you have anything? No, I'm good, man. This is awesome. I just thank God for the ability to be able to talk. To you after the service because these little these little moments this afterward really helps a lot of people yeah and so we're gonna pray for you we can pray for all of you who get to watch this and maybe you're going through a trial maybe you're going through something in your life and you've asked the Lord to take it from you like Paul did and there's certain things that God says I'm going to I'm going to take you through and not just take out of you because I need to take you through it so you can be tried in that fire and you can come forth as gold pure so I'm going to ask for purification. And you know what? It's, it's when that gold gets tried, it's worth a lot more. So we want pure gold in our lives. Amen? So, Father, bless those who watch this. Bless, God, this, this moment of purification in their life. And let them, Father, let them recognize and realize that you've never left them and you never will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.